So the scripture lesson, this is by far become my favorite scripture. And it's, in all of the versions of the Bible, this is one of the most complicated things to read through, which also is why I love it. But it says, if the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your human bodies also through his spirit that lives in you. Now what that means to me and how I paraphrase it to myself and try and do it to my daughters and teach them what this means is the same great spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives in you. That's it. The same great spirit that rose Jesus from the grave actually lives inside of you. The same great spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives in you. How cool is that? The thing that animates you, the thing that makes you get up and walk around and talk and think and do all these things, that's the Holy Spirit. How lucky, how blessed are we to experience that? Before I get into all of that, I want to say thank you to Glenda. And I want to say that this last week I had about 0.0001% of her usual duties. I had to come up with this. And wow, is it hard. <laughs> really, seriously. So thank you. And I'm so grateful to have you back. And I'm so grateful that you'll be standing here next week. <laughs> But really what I, to, what I want to talk about is the Holy Spirit, and, and what I've learned of the Holy Spirit is from y'all, is from this place, is from my family, and especially from many, because that girl can teach me anything. Well, I've been, like I said, coming here for four and a half years. In the beginning, we came from playing shows every single night, downtown and bars and across Texas and all this stuff, and we would play coming to the house of the Lord, and we opened up almost every show with just a light of mine. And you get some funny look from people when you're doing that in the bar, but about <laughs> the second chorus, they're like, <laughs> because they're great and they feel good, but it's not just about what we were doing before. When I came here, I saw an example that I recognized as God. I recognized as love. I recognized the example I saw here in the way that you brought us in as the example I recognized from my parents that raised me like that. I know. <laughs> to love unconditionally, without question, but not to look past who you are as an individual and as you are unique. And I came here and we were crazy because we were just being crazy, playing shows all over the place, and this was the first stable thing I've ever had. Let me say also, I am not a preacher. I didn't go to seminary. I'm not going to teach right now. I'm going to tell you my perspective and my experience because that's the only thing I can speak from. And y'all have been a huge part of my experience and my journey to find what God means to me and how I can experience God every day and how I can raise my kids to know that God is with them. And one of the things I had when I first met Brianna was I had a prayer. And I've said this prayer for as long as I can remember, which isn't saying a lot because I have a really terrible memory. But the prayer is, please, Lord, be with us on this journey as you always are so gracious with your presence. I've been saying that four or five times a day for almost 20 years. And then I come to a place called Journey of Faith. And it's not. I see you. But the funny thing about that prayer, it says, please, Lord, be with us on this journey. Right? I'm asking the Lord to be with me. And then the next sentence is, as you always are so gracious with your presence. Which means he's already here. So what am I praying? I'm praying, please let me recognize that you're here, that you're inside of me. I'm not asking you to come down from heaven and do something. I'm asking you, 
let me recognize the fact that you're here, you're in me. The reason I woke up this morning, the reason I get to raise these beautiful kids is because I have the Holy Spirit in me. I have love in me. I have love that animates me and makes me enjoy life more than I could ever imagine, especially now with kids. So I'm not, and I've talked to the youth about this a lot, and I, I talk to Brianna about it every day. I really struggled before I came here with seeing God as a bearded dude off in the distance that was separate from me. And as Heidi said in her sermon with that amazing book, all of my sin and all of my garbage is sitting between me and God. And that's how I looked at it. When I prayed, I would pray out. Out or up. And it never felt the way it feels now. And the way it feels now is I recognize this passage. For the same great spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in me. Why am I praying out there? He is out there. But he's also right here. And if I can ask for the perspective, the greatest gift we'll ever get is perspective. Because that's what happens... When great things happen, that's what happens. When tragedy happens, you gain perspective. And I gained a lot of perspective when I first came here and saw this example of love, and this example of love, real love, generous love, giving love. And then I struggled with that for about a year and a half, of that juxtaposition of I've always seen him over there, but now I kind of see you, and I know he's in you. I know and I can see that he's in you. And that's what gives you the ability to love. And that's what gives you the ability to show love, and to show generosity. So I really struggled with that until July 30th, 2013. Yeah, yeah. Just I got the date right. <laughs> when Minnie was born. And Yesterday at the memorial, we talked about the thin spots where you get to see God. And where, if it's a near-death experience, or if it's a tragedy, or if it's a great thing, then you get to see God. And some people, it's an angel that comes down and says, everything's okay, everything's going to be okay. For some people, it's a burning bush. For others, it's seeing Jesus in their toast. Whatever it is, that moment is powerful. For me, mine was July 30th, 2013, when my little girl was born, and after being blue, because she had the cord wrapped around her neck, which was the scariest moment of my life, the exact moment after that was the most life-changing experience I've ever had, because she looked back. She looked at me with no pride, no prejudice, nothing but openness and love. And I saw God in my kids' eyes. And I still see it all the time. But what it made me realize is that, yes, God is out there. And yes, God is over there. But God is in my child looking at me with love. I saw God. From that moment on, and I have struggled with it immensely, from that moment on, I've seen God in every single person I see. Whether it's my wife, whom I love very much, or it's some dude that cuts me off in traffic and, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I can't yell at God. How am I supposed to yell at God? Why'd you cut me off, God? Oh, right. Right. I'm sorry. But that's what got me thinking about this experience and, and how to experience the Lord, how to experience God, how to experience the Holy Spirit. And I've always in my mind wanted to be able to sit down with God and talk and go, what? What is all this? What does this mean? How, how did you do this? Is everything going to be a blah, blah, blah? You know, just... Pour your soul out to God. The thing is, you can do that right now. Because God is sitting all around. And God is in the space between us, and above us, and below us, and everywhere we see. And every time you sit down and have a conversation with someone, you're talking to God. 
You're a representative of God because you have that great Holy Spirit within you. But you're also talking to someone that also has that Holy Spirit within them. How amazing is that? You can sit and talk with God anytime you want. The person's mouth might get in the way of actually hearing God's message because we're human. We're not really good at this. The whole talking and sharing thing. Some are better than others. A lot are better than me. <coughs> but you can sit and you can speak with your Lord, with your God, anytime you want. When you're praying, that's what you're doing. You're talking to God. When you're having a conversation with somebody, anybody, anywhere, you're talking to God. When you're yelling at the guy that cut you off, you're yelling at God. Because that same Holy Spirit that animates you and that makes you live, lives inside of them. And that perspective has forced me to give up a lot of bad habits and give up a lot of selfishness. And selfishness in a way I don't own this body. I don't own this world. I don't own a house. I don't own anything. I'm a guest here. Whatever we are, we are guests in God, God's kingdom. Because I look out and I see everyone trying to figure this out. And it's hard. And I am about that far on my journey to where I'm going. And I'm totally cool with that. The prelude of the second book, maybe, of the trilogy of my life. Like I'm just kind of starting to go, oh, I see you, and I see you, oh, and I see what you did there. Instead of, why does this always happen? What's going to go wrong next? Our car broke down last Sunday. Are we ever going to get a new car? The worries and the troubles of life get in our way of seeing God and seeing that Holy Spirit work. This place allowed me to see an example I hadn't seen since my upbringing from my parents and from the love I had from family when I was a little kid. And in, in preparing for this, I remembered the, the first time I saw God before many. And I, I, I hope this is a real memory and not one that I've kind of made up, but I remember it clearly and then there's some kind of fuzzy stuff. But I was sitting in my room in Oklahoma. I couldn't have been more than four or five, about Minnie's age. And I had a guitar, because duh. <laughs> I was sitting in my room, I'm sitting on the floor, and I, I seem to remember there was family out in the living room. And I was sitting in there just doing this on a guitar. I had no idea what I was doing. I was four or five years old. And I was doing this, and I was screaming, and singing, and all that kind of stuff. And I remember looking up and seeing something. I remember looking up and seeing what I've implanted in my mind now as spirits and my granddad and my grandpa. And now I see my uncles there, which didn't pass away until a couple years ago, so I know I'm putting that in that memory. But I remember seeing something in that room. And I remember looking at it and I remember going, okay, totally comfortable. Because I really do believe that my daughter can see things I can't. I believe your daughters can see things that we can't. And it's that innocence and it's that purity that comes from that just, just learning about life. And I want that back. I want to be able to see the things that my daughter sees. And my journey towards that has given me the perspective to, to just fight everything I can in me that says, I am different. I am separate from you. Because we're not. And, it, and the more that we can see that, and the more that we can see that love is what animates us, love is what makes us everything that we are, is God's love. God is love. My three favorite words in the Bible. God is love. I can work my way out of any argument with anybody about any religion with those three words. Because God is love. Well, what about God's love? Well, what about when they're God's love? <laughs> if you just keep saying it, I'll walk away. <laughs> <laughs> or slam the door. <laughs> but the point is that I'm I'm trying to be a better 
representation of my God. Because I have the Holy Spirit that lives within me. And for some reason, I was gifted the perspective to see that. I'm really hoping to hold on to it. Because we lose perspective a lot. Because the car dies. We can't pay a bill. Or whatever happens. And you lose that perspective. That my God gave me life. Gave me the Holy Spirit. Gave me the capability to love. How amazing is that? I have the capability to love my little girls with all my heart and would do anything for them. That is power. That is real. And when I'm, I'm reading these books, I've read a lot of books lately about worship leading because I'm trying to get better at that. I've read about leading youth because I'm really trying to get better at that. And there's so much that talks about the separation between us and God. And I'm trying to get over that. Because that separation isn't real in my mind. That separation is my perspective. That separation is my failing to see that God is over there. And not within me right now, within you, within my baby, within all of you. It's not something, it's not na na nu nu, California meditation, like hippie stuff. This is real. <laughs> Because that's what it says. The same great spirit that rose Jesus from the grave, brought a guy back to life, lives in you. What are you going to do with that? And that's the question I have to ask myself. Because four and a half years ago, there was no way I was going to bring a kid into the world. No way I was going to get married. No way, nothing. Because we didn't have anything. And when I started here, I probably had like four bumps. If we were lucky, and that was in change in a couple of them. And because of this place, and because of this example that I've seen set over and over, and that I've recognized from being raised, very, very blessed to be raised by great parents. Hey, Mom. <laughs> like, it's, it's, we're all trying, and we're all failing, and then we're all winning, and then we're all failing, and then we're all trying. This isn't a static process. You don't get there and turn around and go, I'm here! I did it! Because yeah. if you do, the path keeps going. And you're just stopped. And then you realize, oh right, I didn't have it. Keep walking down that path. And faith for me, I thought about this last night, faith for me has been a lot like my knees. Maybe some of you could relate to this. Faith, you're feeling real great. You're walking around, you're feeling, yeah, and then <laughs> your knees just give out for no reason. It's kind of a faith healer sometimes. Because I'll be driving down the road, somebody cut me off, my knee gives out. And then there's a kid in the back seat going. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's my my test for myself is, because I got a lot. When I'm in traffic and somebody cuts me off, where am I at in my life? Can I forgive that person immediately and love them right now? Or do I need to sin a little bit and yell at them a little bit? Because that's okay, too. All of this is okay. Everything's going to be okay. It's my quote from my mother that I remember for my whole life, no matter what, everything's going to be okay. Because you have love. And with love, anything's possible. With God, anything's possible. God is love. How convenient is that? When I read the Bible, when I read these stories, and I see these perspectives that are a perspective of exclusion or a perspective of any sort of hierarchy in us. I have to remember that that's that person's perspective and that's not mine. Because mine comes from my experience and yours comes from your experience. And I heard the coolest thing in the world, and I'm getting close to him, and I heard the coolest thing in the world the other day on TV, and it might have been because Morgan Freeman said it, because whatever he says sounds awesome. But he said, everybody's truth is the truth. 
And if you think about that, everybody's truth is the truth. And I'd add to that, we can speak in truth, but we only hear in metaphors. Because your truth is yours alone. And I can use what I hear and relate that to my experience, but that's a metaphor for me. I can't understand your truth fully and wholly because you have a different perspective. You've had a different life. You've had all of it. But I can recognize that you have the same love in you that I have. You have this great spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the grave is living inside of us and giving us the opportunity to learn and to grow and to love and to gain perspective. With all that, I feel like I've come a long way. In my personal life, especially in my faith, and a whole lot being a dad, because man, that's hard. But what I have to do now, what I have to figure out, and what I'll ask of each and every one of you, is how can I take the gifts that I've gotten from this place, the security enough to have a family, an umbrella of support that I could have never imagined. And I know that I could have gotten up here and literally fallen on my face and nobody in here would love me any less. How can I take that? How can I take that great blessing that I've been blessed enough to receive and put that to somebody else? How can I give that? Because that's my responsibility at this point. Because I have been blessed beyond belief. I can't even express how thankful I am in my wonderful life because I have two healthy kids. I mean, right there. Come on. It's the biggest blessing in the world. I have y'all. I have a healthy family. I have a wife. And we get along like 99.9% .9 of the time, <laughs> which is pretty awesome because I'm not easy to deal with. But how do I go forward and be a better representation of love, a better representation of my God, better representation of the love I saw in my kid's eyes when she was born. Because that's God. That's real love that you can touch and that you can feel. And I, I can only offer you my perspective, but I really do think that whenever you have, sit down and have coffee, whenever you sit down with somebody and talk, you're speaking on behalf of God, but you're also speaking to God because you have that love. And it's our responsibility to show it. I want to close with the prayer again because I just love it. And I love that it has a journey in the title. Please, Lord, be with us on this journey as you always are so gracious with your presence. And I'll add, please let us gain perspective to know that you're here whether we recognize it or not. And it's not up to us to bring you into the room. It's up to us to let you out of us into the room. I can't bring God down from heaven, but I can show love right now. And I love each and every one of you. And I thank each and every one of you. And I love you, I love you, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs>